Welcome back to another video. I am Tad. You're watching Tips for Technicians. And today I'm covering curb adapters, uh, working on rooftop units and repairs that have to be made. Things you need to check when you are going to do a rooftop package change out. There's a couple rooftop package units on this roof that you can see here with my camera. And most of them don't actually sit on a curb. So you don't need a curb adapter. But today I wanna to talk about what a curb adapter is and talk about what you need to do as far as making checks in the field uh, to get a replacement of a unit and a curb adapter. So today you're watching Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad. Let's get started by showing you a couple repairs that have to be made on this American Standard package unit. Now, when I came up and turned the unit on, you actually had the compressor coming on and it was short cycling. The reason it's short cycling is because there's no pressure in this piece of equipment. It's actually just tripping low pressure switch every time it kicks on. And I'll show you what that is here in a minute and what it looks like. But I want to also show you that there's a bad outdoor fan motor and I'll show you how I check that too. So look at this. You see all this right here? This uh, coil has got a visible oil in the bottom of the pan of this uh, American Standard package unit. In this section here, we've got a bunch of oil you can see. We got oil on the copper. Make sure you turn the disconnect off before you get your hand in here, by the way, guys. Also, you can see that uh, one of the leads of the capacitor, I took that off because I wanted to check the capacitor because my fan wasn't running. This is the fan I'm talking about. And what I did was actually just check the bearings. I'll show you how I check the bearings right now. Just put my hand in here and pushed it side to side. And uh, I've got some slack. And since I've got slack there in the shaft, that means the bearings are going bad. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this thing on, but first I gotta put my capacitor I hook it back up, even though my capacitor is dead. You want to know how to check microfarads on a capacitor? Check out my playlist, Tips for Technicians. I got a video on there on how to check microfarads using your meter right there, microfarads. All right, I'm going to go ahead and turn this back on so you guys can see what it was doing. If you hook your gauges up, you'll see it's kicking out on low pressure. So, check this out. Indoor fan just came on, so. It's running now. Compressor should kick on in just a second. And then when it does, the outdoor fan wasn't running as well. So definitely need to check the power to the fan, check the capacitor because that's what helps the fan run, and then check the bearings. And then we're gonna wait for this compressor to come on. Then I'm gonna go over here, we're gonna talk about curbs. That right there is a curb for an exhaust fan and it's that exhaust fan sits on a curb and we're going to talk about measuring the curb because if you need like that unit right there it ducks into a curb and it's got a concentric vent downstairs that means there's a supply in the middle and a return around the edge of that vent or the supplies around the edge and the returns in the middle some concentric vents are built differently let's let's talk about that in just a second but first come on now you can do it. This right here is the high pressure switch coming from the discharge line of the compressor. This is where you'd put your high side gauge on, your red uh, gauge. And this right here is your low pressure switch. And this is from the suction line of the compressor. So that this is actually what's tripping. And it's 24 volt. And every time the compressor runs, it pulls the suction down and then this switch opens. So this right here is the ignition control board. This uh, actually uh, takes care of all the heating operations. This right here is where the inducer motor is, the gas valve is, the burner. So this is your heat section, your blower section, your filter section on this American Standard unit. And if you wanna to try to fix the coil, more power to you, get some nitrogen, pump it up to about 300, get some uh, torches out here, some solder, see if you can get some needle nose pliers, pull back the fins, find the tube that's leaking, unless it's one of the tubes right here. And that's actually what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna actually gonna get my nitrogen. I'm gonna come up here and try to fix it. Cause I would much rather fix it than sell a new one. It's just easier for me to do that. We're really busy, so it's hard to get to everybody. It's easier to fix the units. 
while we're waiting, let's go ahead and take a look at this other unit because we don't need to sit here all day, right? So most of these units duck into a curb. You can see them, that one right there. There's a curb for an exhaust fan again. Hey, here's some of this that's uh, ripped back so we can actually see, look at this. So that right there is the duct work, supply in the return. There's a package unit and it ducks into this curb. Now usually you would have a unit that sets on a curb adapter and then it meets the curb. Now when you go to price a new package unit, say you have a package unit that can't be fixed or it's old enough or just the building management or supervisors or managers want to go with something more efficient, they're ready to go ahead and install a new piece of equipment because they understand new equipment's more efficient and then what you would do is you'd actually make sure that you check and see what the voltage is that supplies the unit so we would come over here to the disconnect we would open it up and we would see if there was single phase or three phase power and right now we've got three wires coming in okay so that means we got three phase power now i need to figure out with my meter by checking the voltage what is the voltage is it 230 208 three phase is it 460 483 phase what's the voltage because before you call your distributor you're going to want to find out the voltage another thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to make sure that you check the dimensions of your new equipment because this is a stand and your new equipment needs to be checked the dimensions need to be checked to make sure it's actually going to fit on the stand how you're going to put it on there and if you need to get something else some type of other supports uh, for your install you need to make sure you think about that and you plan for that okay if you don't have to put it on the stand and it's actually sitting on what this is, which is a curb, you need to measure the curb. That means you measure the length right here and the width. And after you do that, you're actually going to measure the supply inside and the return because you want to make sure that if your new unit uh, setting on top of the curb is not going to be the exact dimensions or the exact setup for the supply and return, you might need a curb adapter. So what you do is, oh, unit just kicked on. We'll go over there in just a second. What you do is you send these dimensions to, and there's actually a sheet that you can fill out. Um, I think I've got one. I'll show you guys if you want to see that. Leave a comment. There's a, a little sheet that you can fill out. You send it to your distributor, and they'll get you a price on a curve. So, and if you need a price on a curve, that's something extra. Compressor comes on. Outdoor fan does not. Compressor trips out on. Oh, low pressure right here oh there it goes it clicked and that's because we don't have any refrigerant in this unit when it's low pressure it's going to kick off on the low pressure switch now i don't want to sit here and let this unit short cycle so i'm going to go ahead and turn it off but anytime you're working on a unit make sure you got gauges make sure you got a meter make sure you got a drill all right let's go take a look at the next unit and again i'll show you guys what you should do this unit's sitting on a stand up here and it's ducking into the curb okay it's not sitting on the curb that means we don't need a curb a curb adapter okay but if we did we'd have to measure the curb and then measure inside and go exactly where the supply and return is is inside that curb okay i'll show you that here in a minute all right so come up to this unit it's a package it's very very old look inside it's got some ice on the suction line and the evaporator. Why is it freezing up? Well, what causes the unit to freeze up? Well, low refrigerant charge causes it to freeze up, restriction causes it to freeze up, and low airflow causes it to freeze up. Those are three most common. And this right here is the indoor fan. And look at it, it's not spinning. You know why it's not spinning? Because it is locked up. Seriously locked up, man. Look at this. It won't do anything. And it's got power. But you can't even spin the wheel, man. I mean, it's not even gonna spin. Now, do I recommend you stick your hands inside of a blower wheel, especially when there's power on the unit? No, do not do that, terrible idea. Today, I just wanna give you advice and talk to you about rooftop package units. And there's a heat exchanger, look at that. So this one's exactly like that one right there. The supply is on the bottom, the return is on the top. And I'm gonna show you the concentric vent inside so you guys know what that looks like. And then I'll try to get you a uh, little diagram for the curb adapter so you know what that looks like as well. All right, so that's the supply and it's not a concentric vent. 
where you would have, you know, the outer part would be the return or you would have vice versa. This is the actual the supply. And then this is the return. You need to make sure you locate both and then locate the thermostat. So this is where the main power supply is. We have a disconnect here for our rear rooftop unit. This is for our front rooftop unit. I need to make sure I'm able to disconnect power uh, up there to the roof so I can change my disconnect up there if I need to, or so I can actually disconnect power without having to be in harm's way. Definitely make sure you locate this as well. So this is a drawing verification sheet and this is for a roof curb verification. So you have uh, A and B curb um, outer diameter, A and then B. So you've got the length and you've got the width and you've got all these openings. You got C and D. So you can verify your return and your supply opening and how it's configured and see how there's different configurations. See this right here? They're turned different ways. This is a great way uh, for your distributor to know exactly what curb you need, what curb adapter you need. Now it's great to go back with the exact fit. This is some curb adapters right here. See that? You've got, uh, let's take this one for instance. We've got a bunch of um, uh, filler uh, plates here and then these are our openings here. So one of these would be the supply and then this would be the return. There's a bunch of different types of curbs. Definitely want to make sure that you get the right curb adapter and it's nice to have a direct fit unit so you don't have the curb adapter. The unit just fits right on the curb. If you guys have more questions, definitely leave those in the comments and I'll try to help you. And this is how I verify what type of curb I need. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, hit the like button. Definitely share this with your friends. Tag somebody, that helps me. And definitely hit the notification button. If you haven't become a member, then become a member. I really appreciate all my members and I do private videos to try to help you not only with HVAC, but aquaponics and anything else you need help with. Thanks for watching guys. I'll keep you cool if you let me.